Hey, I'm Nate Fawson. I'm a professional archaeologist currently excavating in northern Texas, and I specialize in the archaeology of the indigenous peoples of North America prior to the colonization by Europeans. I especially work in the region that we call the Eastern Woodlands, and I've been working here for about 10 years. So I've got a lot of experience to draw on with the topics that I discuss in these videos. Today I want to elaborate on a subject that I mentioned briefly in my first video, uh, the North American Archaeology 101, the significance of nut trees um, in particular. In archaeology, we call the edible um, products of, of trees like hickory nuts, pecans, um, we call that, that mast. And the word mast comes from Old English. It means the exact same thing in Old English. It's a uh, any of those um, nuts or nutty fruits that come off of trees that were traditionally fed to pigs. Um, one of the less discussed uses for mast is uh, the oils that can be extracted by boiling. The, um, these oils are useful for cooking purposes and for food, but they also can be used to treat uh, irritated skin, for instance, or to condition hair. They are also useful as a, as a base for paints. But mast resources were extremely significant parts of the North American diet before and after the invention of agriculture during the late Archaic, but especially before. First off, mast is one of the foodstuffs that can be collected and put into storage for long periods of time, and there's really not a whole lot else that, can, that has that property prior to the advent of agriculture. So acorns are extremely uh, bitter because of their high tannin content, but these tannins can be extracted by repeated boiling and uh, pouring off. So basically what you do is you collect your acorns, you uh, open them up, you get the shell off, open, um, not necessarily out. Then you boil them, you know, three, four, five times, changing the water after each boiling, and that extracts the tannins. And then you can um, take that mast resource and grind it into a flour or a paste and use that for a lot of the same applications that you might use cornmeal. Um, so you can make acorn-based breads and cakes, for instance, uh, or you can thicken soups with it. Um, there's been some experimental uh, projects done where they try to re, uh, recreate some like recipes that uh, would be possible based on acorn. Um, hickory nuts, uh, for example, pecans, are very high in fats and to a lesser extent um, proteins and carbohydrates but still still significant amount, significant amounts of all three so this is a really invaluable uh, food resource and so collecting and storing these mass resources was critical to surviving long winter months in the eastern woodlands uh, when the game is starting to get thin and also not as active, um, or the other plant-based resources that grow wild are not not available because of the colder colder temperatures. Um, and all you really have to do to get these these mass resources to survive long periods of storage is to roast them uh, briefly to kill any of the parasites that might be living in a percentage of them. And that's really it. You can put them in a hole in the ground and, and let them sit for months. For this reason, most people in the eastern woodlands would actively encourage the prol proliferation of useful species of trees, mast-bearing trees like oaks and hickories, by burning down the trees that didn't produce useful foods. This practice continued even after the invention of agriculture in the eastern woodlands in the late Archaic and the much later adoption of uh, corn-based agriculture from uh, more western regions um, and it even the practice even survived into the period of contact with Europeans um, there are descriptions of like village sites that have uh, really robust healthy productive hickory groves in close proximity so the big takeaway here is that the forests that the first Europeans encountered when they got to North America were not the product of nature they were the product of an intensive and deliberate land management system and controlled burning by North Americans in a tradition of silviculture that had been practiced for thousands of years before anyone from Europe showed up and finally wrote it down. Um, so that's all I have got for this particular video. I hope uh, that was interesting. If you've got any 
questions about this topic or anything else related to North American archaeology, please feel free to leave those in the comments. And uh, as always, thank you for watching. So what I'm trying to do with this channel is twofold. First, archaeologists in America have historically done a very bad job of communicating our nation's prehistory to the general public outside of the university classroom. And most people that I talk to have never taken an archaeology class. So uh, they're generally unaware of the rich pre-colonial history that we have in this country. Um, you know, Americans will travel to Europe and other parts of the old world every year to see famous archaeological sites like the Colosseum in Rome or Stonehenge. And they are generally unaware of a lot of the um, monumental sites and other archaeological sites that we have here in this country. Um, so I'm trying to right that wrong on the, on the one hand. Second, there's a lot of general misinformation um, floating around about what life was like here prior to colonization, who did what, where people are coming from. And I'd like to do my best to correct that as a professional. Um, so if these subjects uh, are things that interest you, uh, then I'll ask you to please keep an eye on this channel. Thank you.